Welcome to Click Star, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, Alex Coons, and Tyler Spees. Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. Just want to let everybody know Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, world's largest hero clicks retailer. Find hero clicks new and old on Trollandtoad.com and use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre-order items do not apply. If you like what you're listening to today, check us out patreon.com forward slash Clickstoff. Dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets entered into our Monthly Discord, or not monthly, our Discord server for Patreons, for our patrons, uh, for HeroClick strategy and tactics discussion. This month's giveaway is brought to you by Troll and Toad. It is sealed product. They can only ship that to the U.S., uh, but it is a brick of X of Swords. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash clickstoff. Uh, it's the pinned post there on how to enter for that brick. Um, sorry about the sealed product only going to the u.s that's the rules um joining me today is jason hmm doesn't have a margarita alvy i'm drinking but it's not alcoholic unfortunately (laughs) yeah um and then tyler a little bit of an older man spees (laughs) that's true every week it just it well it was just your birthday is um, that's true what I'm trying to say, um, and then lastly but not leastly is Alex. How's the mower coming along, Coos? Um, man, it's kind of hard to find the right blades to fit, so struggling with that a bit. But otherwise, it's it's feels good. Good. Well, today is a continuation of really last week's episode uh and someone uh i think it was one of the grown hides messaged and said that uh i messed up the episode numbering oh so, no <laughs> it's fine it's not yeah i did i totally skipped 188 so this is going to be episode 188 uh which will <laughs> appear out of order with episode 189 uh which was released last week but um you know what it's fine. We're not going to try to gain extra episodes. This is just going to be episode 188. Um, and I, I, you know, I probably could do like half numbering or something, but it's whatever. I'm not, I'm just going to fill this in as 188. So there's a slot. It's a time warp. We're going backwards. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but uh, just uh, for the catalog of click stuff episodes, this will just fill into the 188 slot. So. Uh, today, we are going to finish answering questions from last week, and we got a new announcement today, uh, which spurred a lot of questions. Um, so do we just want to start off with the world's surprising announcement? Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. So, um, duh. And I say that, I don't have the, uh, the link open yet. Um, but they released all the prizing for worlds, um and or did they or did they right (laughs) so let's just talk about the biggest thing in the room the world's prizing did not include design a figure for the world championships yeah Uh, okay so like that just sucks ass right let's i'm just we're so let's just say this we're hoping that it's an oversight yeah fingers crossed not gonna hold my breath though Right. So we hope that it's an oversight. Um, but if it isn't, I I think us as a community need to raise a stink about that. It's um, a mistake. It is a mistake to remove that prizing from the world championships. Um, and then additionally, they didn't even call team sealed a world championship either they just call it team worlds what do they call it it is it just says team sealed hmm. it yeah. does it's, it's a side event it's not even considered part of the uh 
championships. Right. So that's that bothers me, right? Because it's it's team mm-hmm. it's team worlds, right? That's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. We can't we just we shouldn't be getting rid of this stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, the yeah. the pri- the prizing thing. It just I, I, again we <laughs> talked about it before. It doesn't make sense to me why they would do it because it's it's the most valued prize and it and it's the least cost to them, right? They don't need to buy product or anything like that. So I, I, it just doesn't make sense why they would get rid of it. I I can't. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm hoping it's an oversight. Yeah. Um, right. Well, I mean, I would say the fact that they did not call Team Seal um, a ch- world championship is not really an oversight. Um, yeah, that seems deliberate. But yes. I don't. Yeah. So that almost seems like the deliberate. That's why I like everybody wants to give out like the best of hope of intentions here, right? Like I agree, right? But it seems like mm-hmm. it was pretty deliberate to put team sealed under side event and not world championship yeah uh, and they missed the design of figure twice under both yeah, those two, under both those events so it's if i'm being super honest about the sealed one i don't as long as they i love the event it's super fun as long as they have it there every year i i don't mind them dropping the worlds because it is sealed it's it's, it's much it's more a valid variance. format. It's a valid <laughs> format. It, okay. it is. It is. It is a valid format. Um, is there like a world championship for the Magic: The Gathering draft? There might be. I just don't know. But I don't know. I don't want to follow that. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know the answer to that. Um, there probably is. There might be. I don't know. It's um, just. It, Magic. I'm just going to Google it, right? Well, I mean, we're, yeah. we're we're only talking about this tonight, so it's not like we have uh, <laughs> Magic World Championship uh, 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's only. Um, let's let me see if there's a draft. For to set precedent, 2019 they did have Team Worlds listed under World Championship. It started yeah. with Euroclix Team World Championship. For those that don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It has that listed, and it had winner won three factory sets, three world championship qualifications, and a design of Heroclix figure, and then obviously everything below it. So mm-hmm. it it is unusual for them to go to take it out of world championship and yeah. put it under side events. So. All right, so um, I'm just reading on the MTG dot fandom dot whatever dot com forward slash wiki forward slash 2022 world championships. I don't know if this forward slash iron point. I, yeah, I don't know if this is an Iron Point website or not, but it says Friday is three rounds of Dominera United Booster Draft, and then five rounds of standard, con- uh, five rounds of standard constructed, and then six rounds of Explorer constructed on MTG Arena. So not only do you have to be good at sealed, you have to be good at constructed, and you have to be good at a video game. That feels right. wrong. <laughs> It's the same game. It's it is the same game. I know, yeah, it just finds funny that you have to be good with the physical game and uh, um, the online version mm-hmm. of the game. Um, Our listeners that tune in right at this point is really going to be confused about... No, I don't think so. Yeah, if they... If they um, yeah, I guess if they... If they fast skip ahead. If they skip like, ahead let me, let me skip minutes. the ad at the, Yeah, let me skip the ad at the beginning and where they just go over their names. Mm-hmm. What the heck? They're talking about MTG. Right. But, uh, so, I mean, it does seem like that, yes, the Magic World Championship does have sealed as a component of that. But, okay. I, I agree, Tyler, but, you know, someone... People talk about, like, casual-ish players being able to have a chance at good prizing. And that is... Yeah, their, that's why... That's their opportunity, right? Because that's why I want the if they took away the event entirely or lowered the pricing, I would agree. I would have an issue with it, right? Yeah. But I mean, but design of figure is the biggest deal of all of that, right? Because 2016 saw mm-hmm. some rather unknown <clears throat> folks winning it. Um, okay, Wait, who so won in 2016? The the guys that designed uh, Hawkman Hawk Girl duo from BTAS. I love that figure. Right. I, that's the other thing. 
all of the all of the world figures are, are great like they're all good you're excited when you see them you get to see the person's name i might be biased here <laughs> but i think they're all great um and it's it's just a cool it's a cool part of the game it it would it would really really suck if they got rid of it right so again i mean we're hoping that it's an oversight um but i would say expect a stink if it's not because uh, i think we as a community should rally around <sighs> the fact that it's missing mm -hmm. now we should talk about the rest of the prizing though because the rest of the prizing outside of that i think mm -hmm. is perfectly right. fine it's so so here yeah. comes world Ch all right uh dice masters world championships uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're not a dice masters man. podcast <laughs> oh man you know what um <laughs> it does seem like that you could enter that and uh maybe get like top 16 uh pretty uh -huh. easily by just entering um, <laughs> just enter but and having uh, a legal deck i right. don't say that our, our new i think you might be surprised our new friends over at Dice Station Zebra might be upset about that. Uh, that is true. Uh, is that the one? Is that the yes, uh, get the, the gap? Jo yeah, the Jocelyn. I found them on YouTube because they did an unboxing for that one booster oh. that they won, and I was like, "Oh, that's neat." So I oh, okay, that's well, I do not want to upset our uh, Dice Masters has been some of the most friendliest players ever. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, so give, give Dice Station Zebra on YouTube some love then. because they They're are, our new sister yes. podcast. <laughs> yes. I, would, I don't think so, Jocelyn. We have not contacted Jocelyn. <laughs> so I do want to talk about... Um, so world, let's just talk about the World Championship first. Let's just kind of get that out of the way. And then I want to... We got questions about the side events and stuff, so I want to get talk about those. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hero Clicks World Championship detail. It does cost to get in this year. That is new. It's five bucks. Sure. Uh, but for Break getting, but for getting in, you get Ashley Barton, which is new. Yeah. She'll probably she'll probably be fifteen ish. Right. So you, other... you you instantly triple your money for getting in with a fifteen dollar buyable. Plus, you get like some other like it's older. We don't stuff. know. We don't know if she's a buyable. We don't know. She if she, is. We, okay, yeah, you're right. We, we don't, don't know that. Know. We think we we think she's a viable. But we don't know that for certain. But yes, right. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but so you instantly triple your money, right? At, I, at, it, at it, minimum. It, and, and Tyler, yeah. right, was jumping ahead. You do also get Hulk and Red She-Hulk, uh, Kingdom Come Red Robin, and the Jack Frost. And these are older figures. Like, those three, they could be new, but more likely than not, those all three have been... Have been Connelly's before. I don't remember the Red Hulk, Red She Hulk. Oh yeah, one. it was oh, yeah. old. Oh, yeah. I think that was before you kind of came back in full oh, okay. force, Tyler. Was that twenty fifteen? Okay, uh, I know. I think that was like more like twenty thirteen. Yeah, yeah. So like just that. like addressing that really quick, it's 14, clear that yeah, fourteen. It's clear that over the past two years, their Connelly stuff has been off because they skipped two years essentially so they don't have any new stuff so they're giving you old stuff um but before that's just what is happening before we did not even get participation prizes in 2019 yeah so, i think they're comp they're, they're so compensating that they know that it sucks and they're compensating it with giving you a lot of pricing right i also think another caveat is that they've finally checked with alliance and realized they had back rooms full of those <laughs> Maybe. And they're like, wow, we've got... like, Because remember, they were throwing up like old bricks of like Wolverine and X-Men or something like bricks, but whatever. They were uh, throwing that up on their store mm -hmm. page. And they're like, we got this stuff for sale, guys. We, we just found them. Uh, right. So I think that's part of what this is, too. It's just they found, you know, mm -hmm. Alliance which, is like, whoopsie. Which is fine, go. right? Like, I would say the nostalgia draft at Nationals was i mean of course like i mean we got the benefit right uh, i mean mm -hmm. alex i don't think you sold your factory set yet but um i've got uh, an avengers assemble factory set if anyone's interested uh, wait hold on you have a star brand chase avengers I mean, assembled, assembled. Oh, okay. oh i i had abpi tyler and i promptly oh, okay. sold mine <laughs> uh, abp or avengers assembled was like uh end hulk and what Scarlet or yeah, in, the Thor, in, in, Rick Jones, yeah. Thor, King Thor, the Iron Man, Ooh, King Thor. Um, the ID the, cards are the in whole, it. the uh, the Goliath, um, mm -hmm. and a few others. Um, yeah, okay, pretty cool. 
You so, know what would be cool? I said this, and they're not going to do it. But man, it would be great if they just started pumping out some legacy cards for some of these figures they're giving away. They're like mm -hmm. Hulk and Red She Hulk. Here you go. And we made this very free for us to do legacy card. Like this is so cheap for us to make these guys. Here mm -hmm. you go. Like they need to be printing those. I feel like they just <laughs> print out legacy cards. It means nothing to them, and it means like. Yeah, and it I agree. So much to us, like it would make all this prizing. If they said all this old prizing we're giving you that's no longer modern, mm -hmm. we're, we're making we're making legacy cards. They'll be released throughout the year, so you'll want to get them, and they'll mm -hmm. be in future WKOs or or whatever. Right. Yeah. That I would agree. go so far. Right. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Uh, Dionasio just posted the entire Supernova set, including the zombies. Alright. Um, um, posted it what where? To what? It's like, a it's a supernova factory set. Posted it where? On the trading he H I T Oh it's like selling it. Oh yeah, he's selling right. it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, um so but anyway, but... so anyways that you get that for entering, right? We we, we just got mm -hmm. past participation. So mm -hmm. that which is new. Participation is new. Mm -hmm. Um and that's pretty good participation for your five bucks, I think. Um yeah. And remember, everybody gets in. Yep. Yeah. So you just show up and play. Don't need to qualify. Top thirty-two is Zatanna, and then the um, list of traffic of the uh, Plastic Man objects, including the tire stack and the uh, the tire stack and the barrel. Which uh, are not plastic. Which aren't, aren't Plastic Man, but they're just objects. Right. Special objects. Um, by the way, did y'all? I know I'm going a little bit off. Did y'all see that Majestics found uh, the fire the fire extinguisher on eBay? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I saw that. And it's not a Plastic Man object. It's just while holding this object smoke cloud, when this character uses it after resolutions KO this object, once per game, something something within three squares of line of fire would take damage from energy explosion poison? You may instead uh -huh. KO the object, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a cool, that's a cool like object. It's very yeah, thematic. It was a, very WK, it was a WKO twenty, but. Uh, and uh, now keep it keep in mind the Zatanna on there is the twenty twenty uh, WKO Zatanna. That ba was the bagged LE, right? Yes, the one that was. So it's not in a box. It's one from a WKO. I think a lot of people we got one at nationals as. Mm -hmm. Surprising, so it's not like a new 2020 <laughs> Zatanna, but like they didn't clarify that. I'm sure. like a lot of the prizing, they're just like, Here's a Zatanna, here's a you know, a Hulk and Red She Hulk. They didn't say this is 2020 or 2014, but there's probably a good reason why they didn't do that, so right. Um, and then top 16. Um, um you get... real quick, oh. real quick, sorry, before we yep. go to top 32 to compare. Top 32 of 2019, we got all the rings. And then the other three objects, exos specs and something else. So Rings are pretty good. This, was, this, this is comparable, um, I think, I because, think so. because the Plastic Man objects are... Um, we're not going to talk about them anytime soon because they're not on the modern legal list for Worlds. Mm. But after that, these guys, those objects are, must, are I think, must-plays. Yeah, they are very good. They make they. Make I think they're must haves. Yeah, they're they must haves. Plastic and very good play. I think he's a good mm -hmm. play with those. He's yeah. not a great play now, but he's. A I like player. him before. I like him now. I think he's a great figure. Those just bump him up. Yeah, so they're desirable, is what we're saying. It's yeah, so like you're they're probably desirable. Yeah, exactly. Um. So the top sixteen prizing. Um, the, the Scarlet Witch is probably the WKO bagged LE, right? Yes. Yeah. The old one that yeah. we've seen. Like... Yeah, that yeah, was because, she. Because... She was a she was a twenty twenty. Yeah, because Quicksilver uh... and Pixie are the other two. Oh yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. They, and the Superman's a bagged. We just got him at nationals. Mm -hmm. Um, Old Man Hawkeye, uh, BC Phoenix, uh, and then Batman and Jaro. Mm hmm. Those solid. Those are all at yeah. least 
right now going for 80 to 90 a piece for those condos. Yeah, that's an extra so. $300 worth of stuff there. Yeah, that's Wait, solid. Wait, how much are the bagged ones going for? No, 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 no. We're saying the con Ellie's, not the Oh, Ellie's. okay. Now, uh, to well, be no, fair, no. though... Old Man Hawkeye's a little over 100. BC Phoenix is <laughs> 80 to 90. Batman yeah. and Jaro is 80. Um, I sold the Superman for 60 last week. Um, what? I sold the set of the three for 100 and 110. Right. Huh. I thought yeah. those were not worth a lot. <laughs> I need to sell mine. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're definitely good. Yeah. Like, okay. Um the, and then The Constantine's pretty cool. Scarlet Witch, Pixie, and Quicksilver are, I don't know, probably fifty total, fifty ish. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah, a bit Quicks- more. Quicksilver's still going for a bit. I think Troll and Toad was accepting him for like twenty to thirty bucks. Yeah. Like as trade in and they don't do high for trade ins, so Right. But Batman at Jaro, I think his price is going to go up because he's finally legal. And he's actually a very, like, out of those three, Phoenix, Hawkeye, and him, he's the most meta potential because right. of everything he does. It's I don't just, think so. Oh, yeah. He free it. It's 75 points, double uh, double, co- uh, double outwit. He gets through Power Cosmic, and he um, he free attacks if he's in hindering. Like the problem is, is his keywords aren't great. He has detective and martial art artists, yeah. but and there's not a lot of Justice League. But when we get the Batman set, and if they decide to do the whole whoppy teams out in the Justice League or whatever, he could definitely see play. But he brings the the be- chase beast potential of outwitting safeguard uh, outwit to a bunch of other teams. Right. All right, I so, think I think he's very good. We never did a review on him, but I right. think he's very good. Is he legal now, you said? Yes, he's on the legal list now. So maybe we talk about him going into Worlds. But let's finish up the prizing. Yeah. Um, top eight prizing. So you additionally get the Ghost Spider, the Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Spider-Man. Uh, that is the three bagged Marvel ones. Uh, you get John Constantine, which is the third of the DC uh, bagged ones, you get the Grod, uh, which was the mail away in 2021. And mm-hmm. I tell you, this is big. This is what's new because Tyler yeah. and I were top eight at 2019. We did not get Chase and Prime sets. Uh, yeah, that's that's very nice. You get yeah. Marvel yeah. Marvel Studios Disney Plus Chase Prime set, Agatha, Sakarian Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, Collector, Captain America. Yeah, Captain America, that's true. He is worth a bit. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and he Cap- comes with objects. Captain All the Car- objects come with him. Uh, yeah. Captain Carter Prime. Um, yeah. The the other... Isn't there the, another Prime in there? Loki and Gamora. Yeah, yeah Loki and Gamora. And, and then, but, and then the uh, other, John, Walker. John Walker. Power John Walker. Who's the other Super Air Prime? Uh, Gamora? Was she one? No, no. Oh, it's, no. it's Captain so, Carter. Vision. 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 Yeah, Vision. Vision. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, that's super huge for top eight. I remember being like disappointed that I didn't get top four. I mean, obviously because I didn't get top four, but I was really wanting the XDPS Chase and Prime set, so I didn't have to go collect <laughs> it. Um, so just making top eight. Yeah, twenty nineteen top eight was just a lot of the bagged Connellys, right? And then like a, a Storm, a Raven, the Kyle Rayner, and the Superman, and yeah. like Lalandra. Like that was. It wasn't bad. Oh boy, but Lalandra. It, but it wasn't like it wasn't this like a Chase and Prime set of a right. good set. So I agree. So that's huge. Uh, then top four, um, you get the addition of a, the Chase Prime set gets upgraded to a Marvel Studios Disney Plus factory set. Plus, well, you get the, that in, in addition. Yeah, in addition to a Chase Prime set, um, mm-hmm. and then you get the X of Swords object set. Which is huge. Uh, no, no. Top four is the Chase and Prime set of X of Swords. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I skipped ahead. I skipped ahead. My bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, X of Swords is X of, Yeah, you get X of Swords, Chase Prime. Uh, and then the top two also get the X of Swords object set plus a Disney Plus factory set. Um, and the only and we- additional thing that you get for winning is the X of Swords factory set. And we just went over... Like literally just went over our live stream of the X of Swords stuff, and 
it's a good set. Like mm -hmm. out of all the sets that they could have years past, Disney Plus and X of Swords. Yeah, it this, landed really well. Yeah, a good solid one too. Like if this was like War of the Realms and well, War of the Realms still had Destroyer. So yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> I think I think the big change of upping primes to now it's like you've got consistently good primes has now made this type of prizing a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think this is a great one to punch for prizing. And I think there's a little bit of balancing. Top eight is now better. And maybe top 32 isn't as good because the, the rings are there. So you could say some of the top 32 went to participation and, you know, you that little bit of rebalancing. But I think overall, outside of obviously the big gaping hole of design a figure, I, I think this prizing is at least equal, potentially better. I think I feel better about it than 2019. I think it is better overall than 2019 except for design a figure obviously yeah um so world championship pricing is really really awesome um mm -hmm. yeah so, I, yeah it's really good yeah all right side of the one caveat <laughs> with the yeah, one, yep, exactly. one one glaringly huge caveat um yeah. so uh the so I, I i can't i can't look at the schedule Sorry, let me look. So, at, so I was going so to work. I was going to look work my way back. Uh, let's do. Let's do. You should do team sealed because the prizing outside of participation is very similar. Okay. To worlds, like there you go. Pretty, you. pretty similar. Right. So yeah. participation is Red Rain Batman. Oh, uh, well, let's just talk about the big thing, right? It's one hundred and seventy dollars, mm -hmm. uh, but you get a brick. Yep. It's. Well, to be fair, ten boosters, but right, ten individual sealed boosters. Could you? Imagine? There's no way that they're going to. <laughs> Why would they mix them up? There's you, no way they're going to do that. Uh, they, they, they could. <laughs> In what no. world? I, I. If they do no. that, we're riding. Yeah, I like. We've been That'd begging be for this change for like what five years, and then yeah. they finally do it, could and they mix that up the boosters. They get slapped in the face. They could do. Yeah. Could you imagine they just roll in and they open a bunch of bricks and just dump them into a giant barrel? <laughs> and they're like, "We're gonna mix them up, guys. Here we go. This is what you wanted." You're welcome. Um, for, those, <laughs> for those that don't know, um, the Red Rain Batman—that's the con in your store one, right? Isn't that the? Is that the? Yeah. Batman? One. That's the vampire Batman, yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness, really? Yeah. From like six years ago? Yeah, uh, so let's be longer than that. Let's I be think. clear. The Red Rain Tyler, Batman, not, The Red Rain it, Batman it, it, The Red Rain Batman and the Vampire Wolverine were uh, awesome. They're okay, alright. I appreciate you saying that, Tyler. I'm <laughs> I'm channeling that energy whenever <laughs> okay. I say that they're trash. Okay. So the reason is because that was my first like big competitive event. I went to a Conneer store in Cincinnati. There was like 60 people or something. I got third and I got this piece and I was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. It's worth like $200. This is so cool. Cause it was like my first, I, I had just started playing like a month before. I, I very much want to just let you know that it's barely worth $5 <laughs> now. Hey, you know, I got my bag for it. I'm <laughs> Yeah, because they did re-release both of those at a later date. Right. As they yeah. Like, yeah. Red as Rain like... Batman mm -hmm. was um, the world's finest pre-release, and then I think Vampire Wolverine was um, Uncanny. Uncanny pre-release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it was Uncanny. That was when they were doing the cool, really cool thing that I hate that they stopped. Where they're like, "Hey, here's a Con Le for your pre-release," and it's like, "This is sweet. Yeah. Like, this is awesome." And then they're like, "Never mind. Sorry, we we wasn't cost effective. I don't know the reason, but it was. Right. It got people to our store because it's like, cool. We, there's no, you're playing for the new boosters and a, a Con Le, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's even if it's old, it doesn't matter. You're playing for something extra. Yeah, I agree." So, other than that, right, they don't expect a top 32 for Team Sealed, which makes sense because it's a third of the field, quite literally. Um, 
And but so you get Zatanna, the Plastic Man object, Superman, Batman, Jaro, Old Man, Hawkeye, a Phoenix, Pixie, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver. If you make cut, um, top sixteen, yep. top sixteen, right? Which is cut probably. Um, mm-hmm. And then top eight: mm-hmm. Ghost Spider, Luke Cage, John Con, Grodd. I think like if you make sixteen, you're in good shape. Like you're feeling good, but if, I think I think the four teams that get knocked out in top eight probably feel the worst for their effort. <laughs> yeah, because then you get Chase Prime after that, right? Right, you you get Chase yeah. Prime like like top making cut right. You end up with a bag full of shit, and then top eight they're like, here's three bag, here's three things in a in a little thing. Um, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm ungrateful here. I just want to be clear. Uh, but from like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah and, and that's it. fine. But I'm just saying for Move like, pl- for like playing another round of hero clicks and you're like, you know, team sealed level. Um, you know what, Jason, I tell you what, if we, if we get knocked out in the round of eight, you know what it, I, I will be happy because we made it to the round of eight to be clear. I mean, I mean, um, I, I agree with you. I'll be sad because I'd I love to have a chase and prime set that be free now. <laughs> Right. Uh, but, oh, I did see that they... So the quarterfinalist team, which is the top four teams, uh, they get the Exosword Chase Prime set. Uh, so no uh, Disney Plus Chase Prime sets in this one. Uh, top two get the Disney Plus factory set. Uh, then the winning team gets the Exoswords factory set. Um, it is annoying. So in 2019, Alex, did they type in times three? Um... They said it, uh, yes, they did times three for everything. This time, they said it at the very top. Oh, okay, like, all prizes include three per team. Okay, good. Yeah, because yeah. they're like, why do I have to type t- three times for every <laughs> single thing? That okay, is now, true. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, the one thing I will say, though, is they don't say that these are cumulative, right? No. Uh, but they should be. No, they don't say it on there for these. They did for the other one. Um, yeah, I'm, but, going, I'm going to assume that they are cumulative. Yeah, there's no way you don't get the the, the down pricing if you win the event. Uh, did, did they say that before? It said it before, la- the year before, uh, 2019, it says all pricing is cumulative. Uh, right? Sure, but we're saying that they didn't, but they you, did it wrong. It has to be, it has to be. Uh, yeah. Unless they just don't have that many factory sets, I don't know. No, <laughs> they do, they got it. I'm going to give them that assumption. Um, so, um, what I do like that they added in here is that tarot cards will not be legal because in a brick, in a brick, you could get a tarot card deck. You should. Like, I feel like you should at least get five, but I guess Mm. maybe you don't get one of each. Right. Right. But I think that you could, so they're just saying that there aren't legal, um, just to remove that from possibility. Yeah. Um, Okay with that. Um, I will say the one thing that I, I mentioned in chat um, that I wish would be with I wish they could do, but not really because I know it'll instantly get videoed, is that if you brought the suite of legacy card figures, uh-huh. that you could play the legacy card with your sealed brick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so whomever brings six hundred dollars worth of legacy figures with them in addition to their hundred and seventy dollar entry can play their figure it sounds like you want to almost help mitigate the randomness of a sealed event <laughs> yeah what a noble cause what a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you tyler thank you. Well, well, i mean the, the legacy card random i mean uh-huh Right. It's like, that. it's like so, that's weird. They pulled a brick and someone's playing three hundred point apocalypse. Like <laughs> right. Right. There that, we go. That would be amazing to play in sealed. <laughs> Not <laughs> to play against in sealed. <laughs> Maybe less so. Right. Um so, so you get the one team that pulls Jim Jaspers and like four swords. And is that actually able to like utilize him in the tournament effectively? Yeah. No, I tell you what. Oh man, Jim Jaspers is probably the worst thing to pull. Um, I no, don't think I don't. so. Like, can... Look, I want that. I want that Nimrod Prime Apocalypse Brick. That's what I'm looking for. Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? We're assuming that it's X of Swords. Um, 
the feast or famine when it comes to Exoswords bricks is extreme. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, it, it, it literally will make or break. Like, if the uh, Devil Dinosaur guys get the Apocalypse uh, Nimrod brick, they're probably winning Team Sealed. Yeah, I mean, we'll I mean, see. They're the guys that won Nationals like twice, and they when they won Nationals, they pulled two Red Skulls. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So they were just running shot, pulse waving everybody, and get you know just shitting on everybody. <laughs> good times, right? That was not good times for their opponents. I'm and the, yeah. And this is why I I'm kind of okay that they dropped the World Championship from it. Uh, I think I think you might be wrong though. Saying Match and Jasper's is not a good play. I mean, thirty-five points for barrier super senses and a free barrier. He's too. you will you will definitely play him, and he's definitely a good figure. Dan's just saying you're not pulling a powerhouse primer chase in that break. That is that yeah. is that yeah. is correct. Yes. I mean, you would probably play him over Iska. No, Iska, mm. Iska, Iska is very hard to kill and sealed. What about yeah, Captain, pretty good. Captain Britain Rogue? I heard a hundred is a good sealed pull. I feel right. like we're gonna. Are we gonna actually have to dip into sealed an episode yes. or something? Yes. Yeah, I will probably are. As a yeah. team, as a team, we're gonna have to. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So, but probably as podcasters, we will as well. So, hey, I was, I, I, fun, what we could do. Not that we need to say this on air, but I, I am still waiting to get a brick or a case. So, I mean, whenever I get my brick, we could just pull it and then not necessarily do it live, but be right. like, here's the pulls we got. How would we, Team Clicks Off, make three teams out of this one brick? Ooh, no, I get no. it. Um, so and there is a thread on Realms of Exoswords case pulls. Uh, mm -hmm. That I would have everybody look at. So, and this is pretty typical. Um, <laughs> there's a brick, the Super Rare Prime Nimrod X23 and Summoner. Summoner was the one with the two stop clicks, right? Yeah. With four swords. <laughs> yeah, those four. The, you want to pull swords. That's a pretty good fucking brick. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, just, I just opened that brick. <laughs> right, yeah. Chase, White Sword, uh, Bay, the Blood Moon, Whiz Kids, Hope Summers. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. Captain Britain Rogue, Bay, the Blood Moon, Monarch, Hope Summers. Uh, and the other one was Chase, White Sword, Super Air Prime, Nimrod, Whiz Kid, Summoner. Um, I will say that uh, in uh, in Indy at the release event, we got two bricks with no Chase or Prime in them. Uh, but a bunch of tarot cards. Yeah. That is the one that you don't want to pull because it was like Whiz Kid and Hope, uh, and Whiz and uh, Whiz Kid is or Hope is not pulling all three teams. No. Um, but the so the problem is is that the Mad Jim Jasper's brick, and I'm seeing this one here, is included. Chase Lady Roma, Mad Jim Jasper, Super Rare Dis Deadpool, Super Rare Whiz Kid. That's a not great brick to pull for sealed. Yeah, you're, never really. you're really you're really leaning on your rares like uh war and death i expect to see a lot of war and death teams with their swords um mm -hmm. which if that kind of support like those aren't great support pieces but i feel like if it was you just had those rares and no support it would be like okay let's just take our participation prize and go home Right, because here's the brick. X-23, Deadpool, Hope, Death, and War. If you get that brick, you're on the struggle bus uh, to try to make cut, I yeah. think. I'd say so. Uh, and that's, that's not... Hey, we don't know how many peepers they got, though. I mean, <laughs> let's be real here. Look, peeper isn't, isn't as good as he could be in Sealed. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that is true. His power uh, is a limited and sealed. Yeah, let me go back to my tier maker to see how many commons and uncommons I put up there. <laughs> Higher than C. Right. Not many, I bet. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it seems like the Chase Lady Roma, um, you know, uh, Jim Jasper's brick is common. Um, but like, if your super rares are like Deadpool and Wizkid, that just feels bad. Mm -hmm. They're not powerhouses, right? Um, no, not really. I think there'll be a lot of Danger Room teams. Um, yeah. If you get the True. Chase Annihilation, that would be good. Um, I would. I would say. I would say if you're going to participate in the event, have a plan for your pogs that you could pull. Uh, is the do we know? Does the Dyson Token set have most of those? I think so. Or are they all just the Celeste and Phoebe and Sophie from Emma Frost? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I, I'd be really impressed if someone was able to pull off like an X Men recruiter team. <laughs> like it's possible. I mean, yeah, it's it could be. It's probably the most likelihood you see an X Men recruiter team. So that's true. The Chase Saturn brick's not bad. Chase Saturn X twenty three Captain Britain uh, Red Root the Forest. Okay. We got yeah. a lot of questions. This is we do, we do. We All right. Yeah. All right, that's cool. It's been a fun aside. More to talk about. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll cover this a little bit more in depth. That's true. It is already we got nine, a month. It, it is already nine fifty five. Um, yeah. All hey, right. Guys, so side of this. What guys? What uh, this this time? Not this exact time, but this day next month is when worlds are starting. We're like yep. thirty days away. Uh, 31, yeah, 31 days away. All right, so Sunday. Uh, I kind of want to work backwards because we're least likely to participate in the other ones. Uh, 10.30 a.m. starts the Popper Heroclix event. Uh, we did get the uh, build for that. Uh, Popper. I'm trying to scroll to it. 300-point uh, modern team, common uncommons, and mini games. Um, game figures only, no Fast Forces, Primes, Rares, Super Rares, Chases, or Promos. All sideline games elements must also be of a legal rarity. Uh, $20 entry, you get Bat Knight, White Lantern, Batman, and Commissioner Gordon. All three good figures for your 20 bucks. Uh, the finalist, uh, gets a Blackbird with ID cards. Uh, and then the winner gets an Exosword tarot card set, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, th I think if I think if we don't make cut though, we're probably jetting out Sunday morning. Uh, those of us on the on the phone here. Uh, probably it'll depend. <laughs> probably it'll depend on how things are going. But mm -hmm. uh, now, it also would depend. I know it, like ninety nine percent chance it's going to be just the X of Swords tarot card set. But if they just yeah. threw some of the slop ones in there, they're like literally a whole set of tarot cards. That would be pretty cool. Like that would be like I'm kind of interested in this event now because mm -hmm. right. that'd be sweet. That'd be well worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. So Saturday has no side events for Hero Clicks, um, other than the Exosword slop event, uh, which is by 2 p.m. So if you don't win your first three games. You should probably get in on the X of Swords, assuming they give out the participation prizes. Yeah, which they probably will. And, you know, it sounded like it was a lot of fun. It was a really cool event. Right. I agree. Yeah, you could probably make it through four rounds. If, because if they were going by, like, how they ran it similar to Nats, which they could, then they could do four rounds. And sure, then... but if you're 0 and 3, you know, maybe you can probably go ahead and drop. <laughs> right. I'm saying, like, if you're like 2 and 2 or, or yeah, like yeah, yeah. One, and, 1 and 3, like, you're 1 and 2 going into round 4, and you're like, do I drop? Mm -hmm. Like, you might just play that last round because you. They'll probably wait for you if, like, depending on how things are going. Right. Because they were pretty accommodating in that, given the tight time constraints, but. Right. So they ran things quickly. Friday, working our way back uh, at 8 p.m. Um, so Friday is, you know what? Uh, here's the thing on the schedule. Ah, here's the difference. Here's it on the schedule. Oh. 10 a.m. Team World Championship, World Championship. begins. 
Okay. Well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Much ado about nothing, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that is likely to be over by 8 p.m. I think at least the podcast folks here, uh, I will personally be doing the fan appreciation event. But at 6 p.m. Uh-huh. is the Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy Scenario event. Uh, which um, which is 400 modern team with no tarot cards. The sideline must include one character representing each of these keywords. No character may count for two. Uh, scientist, celebrity, spy, and soldier. As if that doesn't give you the most janky ass, uh, powerful, 400 point modern team. Uh, There's a lot ever. of stuff there. Yeah. So like uh, yeah. Sci- scientist, uh, flashes, celebrity, Sakari and Iron Man. Um, soldier 1776, uh, spy. I didn't have off the top of my head, but um, you liter- out there. you literally could build a Spider-Man family team that uh, is super OP for that event. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely I'm looking at is probably a much more casual tailored no event. <laughs> Uh, have I you mean, played? I mean, have you, have you, have you, pl- the prizing. uh, the prizing, let's talk about that. Um, entries, $10 participation is Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Top four Spider-Man winner is the, the Spider-Man and the John Con. So, uh, prize know, figure. Yeah. John Con prize figure. I don't um, know why they said that. I it's probably know. the same one. <laughs> I don't know either. But, it uh, is, I'm sure. Uh, oh, Spy, you totally get uh, Captain Carter Prime um, on that team because you can't have a sideline, so no Destroyer, so you might as well play Captain Carter Prime or Power Broker. Mm. Um, that's not broken or super powerful at all. Um, God, that's super awesome. But the prizing for that one's probably the weakest of all of them. Mm. Um, and then working our way backwards, some more... Uh, third. That is just uh Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. Thursday. Um, we have the uh storyline OP, uh, and then we have the Silver Age champ. The Silver. They didn't call it the Silver Age World Championship. Uh, sorry. Let me no. just do. Ex- they have Extreme Tarot on Friday too, right? Yeah, yes. it doesn't sound extreme though. It's. A- it's still one a turn. Right. It's, it's just, just normal tarot. Bring you just a, don't get to pick them. Bring a 400-point modern team with no tarot cards. You get a random tarot card. Uh, you get a rogue ID and a rogue prize fissure, which I'm assuming is the Asgard rogue. Probably. Probably. Uh, Lalandra. Uh, you get double Lalandras. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm then, playing in that event. You get the Exosaurus tarot card set. Uh, but it's a 400 point modern team um, with no other restrictions, which is broke as shit. Um, I literally, you literally play th- whatever you want, whatever your modern team is, plus 100 points. This game, okay, yeah. I know why it's going to be extreme, is because it's going to be a cluster. Because the judge will reveal a card every turn for each game. What do you mean? That's what it says. Every turn for each game, the judge will reveal a tarot card. So turns are going at different paces. So like, how is that going to, like, is he going to say turn one, this is the tarot card. Turn two, this is the second one. Like, sure. how, how is that going to work with, if you've got like 10 games going or. Well, the judges are very attentive. Like they're gonna have to run between like games. Like, here's your card. This is the card we're playing. Like, yeah, that that's the extreme part. I think is that we're gonna see Anthony Barnstable running around constantly, like trying to give out tarot cards. We're we're gonna see that anyway. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we are gonna see Anthony <laughs> running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Um, but um, so that's still cool for ten bucks. Yeah, I think you're pretty good shape there. Uh, mm-hmm. Silver Age is participation you get a, you get a traffic cone uh we do have our first question here for the night on this one um oh and i am fucking excited about this like i am just fucking poured on boys this is the answer to my question i am all in uh top eight scarlet witch hawkeye bc phoenix blah 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 blah. the top four doesn't get anything additional finalist gets Chase Prime set and a bunch of other shit. The winner gets a Chase Prime set of Exoswords. Um, 
Oh my god, it's awesome. I feel uh, like that's fuck a, that. Is I am it not playing that shit? Does it not <laughs> feel like an oversight? Why does top four get nothing? I don't know. Maybe they'll add more, but probably not. That um, just seems weird that it's not like, hey, we're we'll throw in like a couple more of these WKO prizes like for top four. It just seems weird that they have top eight and then because it's only a sixty four player event they don't list it here but they list it on the um yeah they're probably not they're probably not expecting all 64 players because it's thursday everybody's going to be getting in i would expect probably 32 players for this one that would be my guess yeah i'm playing the forward screw that stuff right so (laughs) the question from clay wood first question of the night brs constructed or exasword slop event uh, and this would be on Thursday, uh, Thursday, right? Because Friday we're all doing team sealed. Saturday we're trying to enter, um, you know, singles worlds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so are y'all going to do the? Y'all are going to try to do the exo? Okay, so my answer is silver. Jason, you're going to try to do the slop event. Yes. Tyler, what are you going to try to do? Uh, probably the slop event. Alex, what are you going to do? Actually, landing silver. Right yeah, fuck yeah. Let's do it. Nah. I want to win another apocalypse. <laughs> right. So then PJ Bowen's yeah. question for you, Alex, and me, what's ever going to play for silver? What do you I think? Wonder what, what I wonder you... what Dan's playing. It's I want to answer off. that. Yeah. Uh, well, no. the most obvious answer. Well, no. What, yeah. I want to know what what Alex is playing first. That's the question. I can, I'll, my answer is easy. Well, then get you do your answer. Mine will take longer. Fucking Thanos. <laughs> It, to me, it seems like clearly the best build in the format by like a mile and a half is something with Thanos on it, with Jim Jasper for five points, giving Thanos the gauntlet, and Collector buffing all of your IDs. Like, oh something with that oh, has to be... Oh, yeah, Tyler. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Mm. Like it can't, it can't even be close in my mind that that is the best, the best thing to play. It, it's it's the best for me because I have the most experience playing it. But there's obviously yeah. a lot of good shit in silver. Um, Soldier's good, good Alpha's good. I mean, you got what's her name, the um, Overdrive Captain America gal. Um, you know, you've got Micron, you've got Batman. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's mad Jimmy J collector and Thanos and calling out four da- five damage, Captain Marvel's four oh. damage, Black Widow's four damage recruits. Man. Yeah. That's totally what I'm doing. Not your, <laughs> not your, not your team. Like Avengers 100% because Avengers got so much better with Disney plus with Scarlet Witch and start carrying iron man and now there's hope summers that actually does add like the leadership and copy and powers and stuff mm-hmm. add that on with steve rogers who can add mad jimmy if i want um or any about molecule man or whoever else i want plus giant girls plus <laughs> black widow like chase black widow plus any like avengers is stupid good i think um they weren't before because they didn't have the powerhouse that is Scarlet Witch and Sarkarian Iron Man. Oh, so, that's right. And now oh, they do. Oh, man, I love it. Because yes. I can call out Black Widow and she can just uh, she can just one-shot a Scarlet Witch. That's true. Uh, yeah, I think that's possible. Because she, she out, outwits her shape change, outwits her super senses, and then she's got four damage knocks her to stop, gets rid of all the powers, not on her dial, and then the recruit poisons her to death. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, and all because, that seems possible. Because, because I'll, have, down there. I'll have double outwit because they also have the gauntlet. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah, ID cards really need another look at as far as like Disney Plus as well. Because yeah. there's the Vision ID card. Right. You can you can have your tarot card deck in that too, right? So you can. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I love it. That's oh, true. Jason, I love it. You're just talking <laughs> right up my alley. Fucking fl- <laughs> flipping ID, flipping tarot cards, calling out IDs, collector buffs, Thanos free phasing, having double gauntlets. Oh, I'm gonna have a blast on Thursday. 
it's gonna be a, a madhouse. That's why I'm like, uh, do I want something safe where I'm gonna feel safe, or do I want to go and play <laughs> silver where it's like, ah, I could just go in with great intentions and come out like just mad at the world. It's because, just utter insanity. <laughs> and I kind of want, I kind of want that. Just the idea, like call, like calling in Prime Vision if I really wanted to waste my prime slot on that. Like right. you could call in Prime Vision at a hundred to flurry and do all his crazy stuff. Like there right. is a lot of options out there. Right. And X of Swords has a lot of people too. Like you could call in Legacy Iceman. Like that's you have two IDs you could do that off of. Me too. So I mean there's there's a there's a lot out there. So Yeah. I agree. So, um, and then let's see, just because we're going through questions. So, Lou Minotti asks, is Team Worlds a brick or 10 individual sealed boosters? We hope it's a brick, right? Giant, yeah, we're giant, assuming it's a brick. Uh, giant, then, giant barrel full of boosters. They open it. Uh -huh. like, Don't put that juju on us. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, please, no. no. I, I would probably <laughs> just say we're going to, I would just rather light my $170 on fire out in the parking lot say uh, that until they pull like three chases somehow and we're like this was the best format ever right yeah that's true we <laughs> um jay solomon asked what character would you design if you won a weight um and then i'm, we'll just, saying, I'm just going through the um uh, the prizing stuff um, I like the Armado Amado Romero ask. I like the idea of the nostalgia draft a lot. Would old prize support be cool as an addition, not a replacement? Getting stuff like the Supernova Zombies at Worlds would be cool. I guess Clicks doesn't have the same kind of market as something like Magic the Gathering, but it would be neat. Uh, Amado he, uh, the Hero Clicks does have a similar um, market to magic not probably as crazy but the old stuff is worth some money not like magic <laughs> not, like magic. <laughs> not like magic no um so I think, I think they could tailor it a little better like if they as opposed to like don't get me wrong when we got a national nationals was kind of cool some of it was unexpected and not exactly what they listed but I think if they tailored it and were like, hey, everything in this nostalgia draft has at least one legacy card that, not, like, you don't get the legacy card, but at least has a legacy card figure or two, and if not, they will in the future. You know, so, something to, like, make it more interesting than just saying, oh, I'm going to get this set that will have no value outside of Collectors or and Golden Age. So mm -hmm. either they keep it all Silver Age and up, or they find some ways to make some of this more interesting because, you know, some of the prizing, you're like, woo, a, a Batman TV set. To, to or... be fair, that went to 16th place. Uh, still. And he scored a whopping 30 points on the day. So. But he'd be more excited if they're like, hey, guess what? The Mr. Freeze in that is getting a legacy card. So. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's such a power. It's I'm just saying, it's such a powerful tool they have with yeah. legacy cards that is literally costing them just time to design it and the cost of cents to print it. Yeah. So I'm with you. Per card, obviously. I'm with you. Um, but yeah, I mean the legacy card. The the, the uh, bleh, Tyler, you, you, I still need to get your pictures to you. Um, mm -hmm. But um, the. Nostalgia draft was a. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I obviously enjoyed the five hundred dollars I got too, but um, you would enjoy it less if you didn't place as high as you did. Only simply because what they had on the list is not what they had. Uh, you know what? I would say. Um, um, I I would say what I would say to Steve DiCarlo in this episode in this part of the episode. Uh, or at least what I was thinking when Steve posted this. He was like, top 32 only got got rings last time as opposed to these traffic barrels. And I'm like, who in the world is targeting top 32? So well, like, okay. Like, like, so yeah, I guess. 
But like I'm going to I'm not going to be disappointed in the prizing if I'd gotten 16th place. I'm disappointed in myself for getting 16th place more so than the prizing. I think you're also not thinking about the people that are targeting for top 32. Like being realistic. Like it'd be great if I got one at all. But realistically, I would like to make top cut this year. I haven't made it in the past 3 years, you know. So those are people like those people do exist. So that's why when everyone was hyping about, well, the design of figures not in there, a majority of the people probably are like, okay, I probably am never going to win that. That'd be great if I could, but I'm looking more at mm. the top 32, top 16. The well, thing that's is, fair. you're that's like fair. those people. That's a majority of the com- the competitive players, not the top players, but I think the majority of the mid players. Well, I would just say. I would just, I agree with that, but I'm thinking from like when Steve said that, I'm like, Steve, you're better than top 32, right? You sh- you need to be aiming a level or two higher there, bud. Um, in Steve's case, I guess, is what I was thinking. Um, but um, anyways, yeah, I get what you're saying, right? And we talked about that, hitting, you know, hit your first goal, win a game, hit your second goal, make a cut sort of thing. You're right. I, I agree. Sorry. Message intended just for Steve DiCarlo. <laughs> um, aim aim higher, Steve. Um, in a very positive way. So, um, and I guess we would say, uh, answer our question from last week, Manny Kinks asked, what the hell is up with WizKids? Um, that's what we've been trying to uh, de- delve into this episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. So, all questions, right? So, this is going to kind of go all over the place. I'm answering questions from last week. Uh, Jack Smith, with the announcement of this new Spider-Man set coming out, are you ready for Spider-Man Family Swap and Recruiter? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I mean, if Nationals is at Gen Con again, then we probably don't have to worry about it for a very big, significant tournament outside of player-run ones. So... Sure, I'm all game. Yeah. And then uh, what generic keyword won't get Spider-Man family cheat, Cosmic? I don't think there's going to be any more cheat. I think they're done with the... We just got one in War of the Realms. We just got it. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to do any more. I don't... Cosmic, I think, would be too strong. So... But who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, Ben Grohide, Grohide asked, "What could WizKids do to improve their design philosophy, specifically in regards to maps? And do you think WizKids should be in more in touch with the game to anticipate things like Realm of Death getting specifically banned directly after getting repented as an OP prize?" Um, I think Realm of Death was like a specific issue, just because it, you know, they're just trying to, um bring a map back basically and they had the the design has gotten better over the years um is the goal at least uh so i think that was that might have just been oversight then i think f- as far as new maps go um i feel like i i have liked most of them yeah so the issue is is that like I don't think Realm of Death should have ever been reprinted. I mean, probably not. It's on a ban list now, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> right, but that's the problem, is that I think that they are a little out of touch at that stage of some things um, at some point. I don't know what stage that is, but whoever is greenlighting maps doesn't realize how hard it was to traverse Realm of Death. I mean, I don't know, Jason, you were the only one playing. Was Realm of Death that that shitty of a map to play on 10 years ago? I don't remember it being that bad that far back, but we also didn't have the figure that was shooting through the walls and mind controlling through walls. (laughs) That is fair. Uh, Back then. It's not all Thanos' fault. It it Uh... is. Anybody else playing that map? Peepers. Don't forget Peepers. Folks. Oh, true. Peepers, peepers never got to play on it. So. Yeah, yeah, well, it's the threat of Peepers is why it got banned. That's Let's be real. Yeah. It's not Thanos. It's, 
Good point. That's true. Yeah. But like, so like, but there's got to be like the a difference. But there's got to be a good middle ground between. And I'm just going to use two maps here between Realm of Death and Fountain of Asgard. Like Fountain of Asgard only has the little pillars in the center. Otherwise, it's a fairly open map. Or you know, if you want to use uh, Krakoa as an example, um, those maps are extremely bland and realm of death is extremely oppressive so where's the center ground right i think there's a lot of ground i think there's a lot of maps that are in that middle ground but they just don't get played because they're not oppressive or blank maps either get played maps either get played because they're blank or they're oppressive Mm mm-hmm you guys this um like why i don't know that something's just not sitting there i feel like they're just using too many old maps like i understand i think they're just trying to save money or something at this point because they won it does rub me the wrong way that we've gotten the same castle map three times and two of them are still modern legal like they reprinted a map that was already still modern. And Which one are you talking about? Otherworld. Otherworld um, Castle. Otherworld Castle was really hard to get though during the pandemic. That's... But it was also a reprint, wasn't it? Is a yeah. reprint of Arthur's. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. So they already reprinted it and then they reprinted it again. So the only new map that we get in X of Swords is the shadow not counting the little tiny ones. Um, because you know the light spoke or whatever those are like a four, well we four get light. we get other world shadow of the starlight citadel is new uh, yes Kokoa garden is new Morlock tunnels is a reprint limbo is a reprint is from where like UXM Avengers versus X Men yeah it's, oh, it's a okay. got it I think is what it was yeah. didn't was not aware of that that's a good I mean, was on HC maps good good catch Jason. Um. So yeah, yeah th- three or f- three reprints, but I mean, I'll give them. A, I'll give them an exemption on Otherworld Castle because that one was a pandemic issue map. So, um. But I guess to maybe Ben's question, um, their design philosophy has to be somewhere in the middle. Every map has to be somewhere in the middle of blank or oppressive. And they need to have some sort of designer or some sort of play tester looking at each one of these maps before they're released. Somebody to give them some feedback if they're not already. Which yeah, I if they're I, not already, I, I, don't I don't know. know I don't know. I don't know if they yeah. are not. It's hard to say. Um, um so. I mean, they. It does go through a process. I guess. I mean, it it does. I mean, it's very similar because Rock had a bunch of maps that went through review process back when it was the the original. Yeah, but like, then but then they changed their mind and just got rid of a bunch of maps. Yeah, with, but I think it, it's all under the same designer. Like it's all, I don't think there's like a bunch of map designers out there. I think it's just all. Right. And it goes through a lot of reviews before right. it goes through things. It's not just one person going, "Hey, we're gonna just." redo limbo don't care about what it is just redo it because someone really likes limbo i think it's i think they do go through a process but maybe they just don't think of it as like they're maybe not conscious of everything about to come out yeah be like oh we didn't realize thanos was coming out when we green lit this in the, map in the same op set yeah basically right um, Adam Horror asks, "What do you think is the hardest part of playing tarot cards? The fact that remembering they, them, remembering them. Yeah, that's probably. I'm doing okay with remembering them so far. Um, Jason would probably say, what the fact that they exist. Yeah. How many, <laughs> how many games have you played in person? Like in person? Zero. Um, I've only played in person the uh, slop events with tarots." Yeah, I think it's obviously going to be yeah. different because online it's way easier to forget. 
because yeah, true. You have to take extra steps. Whereas in person, your cards are sitting right there. You have a visual, like much more tangible reminder. Yeah, right there with you. So, I could agree with that. Um, and then Adam also asked, "How long do you think the WKO twenty LEs will remain in modern since they've just been released?" I, anybody's guess is as good as anybody's at this point. Yeah, uh, that's the time is twenty twos in in the in the list this time. I don't know, did they? I, don't uh, know. I think they did. I think they're listed as twenty twenty twos in the modern list okay. that is put out. Yes, okay. they are. Yes, you are correct. They are listed as twenty twenty two, so they will get the lifespan of the fantastic fours like they're the same 2022 whiskey yeah. oh, well oh, fantastic fours are a 2022 connelly 2021 technically oh gotcha they're a 21 yeah you can just yeah. tell it's just so painfully obvious that they're not a 22 designed figure yeah so we're actually we're not losing much at all come next year because next year it's literally galactus and the tire stack and barrel is the only 2020 WizKids ex exclusive currently on the list. Which Galactus, they may push that back too because Galactus took a bit for everyone to finally get it. So Yeah. Might be a chance to actually play it. Um, <laughs> all right. So Patrick's question we answered. Uh, Richard's question we answered. Um uh, Anthony Barnsdale had a big bunch of questions here. Um, after Nationals, do you think there are any game elements that need to be watchlisted? Ooh. Um, no, not really. Um, um, the only one that comes to mind is Iron Man for me. Right? Um, yeah, I think. I think, I think <laughs> no, the the Mary Jane one. No, yeah, a, I was just I, I was just making sure. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. That, I think if anything, Thanos needed to be needs to be unerratted. He didn't win the event. Obviously, <laughs> he's not that bad. Shut the fuck up! Oh my god. Um. Well, based off our previous discussion, maybe Hell's Pit. We yeah, we did. Pit. We did. We did get a well, somebody posted about Hell's Pit that As was right that it was terrible. It's terrible to look at. It is hard on the eyes. Yeah, so like that map, maybe like that map may could join the list, and it might be a little too oppressive. But I didn't feel really much when I was playing. I was like, "Oh, this is just incredibly unfair." Right. Um, I, mean, I agree. It's just terrible to look at. It's just a bad art, I think. Um, and then I'm just moving us along on questions tonight. Um, what yeah. is your expectation for for? I guess so. Let's see. On Saturday, uh, so we I would expect in the building at Memphis. He, he, the question is, what is your expectation for total of attendance at Memphis, or in just the world's main events, or however you want to give an estimation? I think there'll be two hundred and fifty people in the building because there'll be dice masters and just BR players and side event players. Um, but for the main event, I think the over under is: Do you think we'll get above one twenty eight? Or in between a hundred and a hundred and twenty-eight. Um. Yeah, that's the question. Um, that that's that's the question to answer. What do you think, Tyler? I think we're gonna have a pretty good turnout. Um. So I, think, I would definitely. I think everybody. I think everybody will try, right? Because they get in. Right. Yeah, there's I, no I reason like to no, there's true. no reason to not pay your five bucks, right? Well, exactly. The yeah. trip is the reason for most. Well, if, you're, okay. if you're there, if you're yeah. there, why play a br versus paying your five bucks? Yeah, I agree it's a that. it's a time commitment though. You I know, but play three brs before you're like, okay, I finally need to drop and have a miserable time. If you're like not playing very competitively, <laughs> you're like, I just want to join, like. And have three miserable rounds? No, but you see, that's the thing. You're not going to have a miserable round. Just yeah. do, do not have a miserable sit, round. Some people sit, will you, have miserable rounds. You sit down. Oh, be, I, I put together a cool sidekick team, and I sit across from Daniel Powell playing his Mad Jim Jasper's Thanos <laughs> team. And I'd be like, yeah. oh, this is going to be a fun day. I'm not, I'm not playing Mad Jim Jasper's in Modern. I think I would take the under on the 128. I... 
I would take the over. I think it's also going to be over 200. Yeah. 200 I, for the main event? No, for the, the event. Because Dan, Dan said for, like, sorry, for I, the hall. Sorry, your, your, your over-under is the main event. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I think it's over. You think you think over 128 people will be in the main event on Saturday? Potentially. Yeah. I, I think, I think I'll, I'll take that one. Because yeah. I think so – I've seen so many people that I've never seen play before – talk about coming to the event and playing in it like right everyone is dying to come to this event i feel like everyone has been well, they're not dying waiting. they're not dying they well they're are, eager they're, they're very eager, eager. To come. Yes. right if they're dying then that number of 128 drastically decreases. unless this is their the, this is their make-a-wish and they really want right. to come get a, a i round. i think it's going to be very close to 128 whether it's over or under, it's going to be within a few entries. Um, and then, um, uh, by the way, um, so, uh, Kuz, somebody wants you to do, Mark Woods wants you to do, uh, Lewis and Mark want you to do a X-Swaps uh, Kuzinator video. Hey, everybody. Just want to take a moment to have everybody uh, take a look at the link in the bio for the Oxit app. Oxit is a great place to buy, sell, and trade hero clicks. Uh, check out the hero clicks cafe link to join in bio. X swaps. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm concerned about X-Men at this point, uh, strictly because I feel like they have too many options now. Right. Well, let's get there. You... Let's get, that's, we're almost there to that one. So, um, oh, okay. Then that's another question. And then, oh uh, yeah, we'll get there. Amato, do you think Sakar and Iron Man is a problem? Uh, Tyler seems to think so, maybe. I don't think he's a problem. I think he's fine. Mine, I... died. Mine died a lot. Like, like, it was... He wasn't a mainstay to where he just... I think people are solving him. I think people are... He is a pro... He is, for 50 points, he is like a Sky Tyrant level and people have gotten to the point where they're solving for him. And it's just, I know how to take him out. I know how to outwit him. I know how to, like, perplex him down. And then bang, bang, bang. And he's just not effective anymore. I, he's I had not to, effective. Not as effective, because... He's not three... He's not as... the pro, so I think, Alex, he's not as effective defensively. Right? In general, like, three hits, three good hits, you either can't pick powers anymore... Or he's dead. Like, so at some point. Yeah, that's a fifty-point figure that just survived three hits and is still alive. And yeah, he's he's and really most good. Like, and w most likely won't do much after those hits, is what I'm saying. Like, that's it, that's possible, but he's probably already done stuff. It depends, but yes, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that I feel like the short amount of time we had to adjust to him people were already making those adjustments in nationals and they're going to continue to make those adjustments into worlds. I didn't, any games I played against one or I, you know, cause I was playing one. He wasn't the oppressive figure on the field that was just changing games. Like he was a damaging figure, one that could d deal the damage, but he died frequently or I killed there frequently. <laughs> it, it wasn't as oppressive is what I'm trying to say. Like, he didn't control the map in most of the games that I played. Oh, I mean, it seems like he's the hardest figure to kill on your team, but okay. Yeah. He's he's not. That's what I'm saying. People have methodically, like, the top tier players. There's no, no, because no, you can't know how to beat him. You beat him by punching him. He doesn't have any defense powers or rollouts. You just punch him. You, pre the... no, you prepare your team to face him is what I'm saying. I you that doesn't you can prepare your team to face Thanos or Vulture or any other figure. That doesn't yeah. mean they're good or bad. Whoa, Thanos is not as bad as Vulture. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. They both for the Vulture never got around it. So neither did Sky Tyrant. So yeah, right. I yeah. I put I put Sarkar and Iron Man at the level of Sky Tyrant, maybe a little less because he doesn't have like the full map. I'm gonna kill your whole team. He just has the consistency that Sky Tyrant. Well, Sky Tyrant had it too, but 
it, it's I put him like very close to Sky Tyrant level, and Sky Tyrant never got the errata or anything for him. So I don't think he'll ever get one unless something in Avengers Forever just makes him even more right. obnoxious. Um. So uh, let's see here. Um. There are several questions about tarot cards. We're going to do a tarot card stream here in the next week or so about ranking tarot cards. So, Rodrigo, Dionacio, thank you for your tarot card questions. Uh, Richard, we did a, a tier maker for the XOS set. Um, Raphael, I got an interesting question here. Most of you guys are team builders. How do you feel when you see a lot of people playing your teams? Do you like it, hate it, or do you do not care? Uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, I like it. It's alright. I, cool. I, I loved it. Like This mm -hmm. was the first yeah. time I put something together that people were kind of messing with. Not that my team was super original, but I feel like me putting together this team and then Isaac playing it in the, a similar version on the broadcast and then expanding further like and won the UK Nats without yeah. Pro. Like I was like, that's cool that like it felt I think it feels less of wow, I feel honored and more of yay, I'm on the right path. <laughs> like that my a team I built is succeeding and it isn't just my individual talent that's making the team win. Mm -hmm. It's more of I built a team that is successful that others can apply their talent and win with, not just me right. being very, very familiar with the team. So that aspect of it I really enjoyed recently. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. And, and that's the way I kind of feel about it too, Alex. Is, I mean, but that's literally my vision for being here on Clickstaff is to share ideas for people to use. Mm -hmm. um, and the key thing, and I think a key thing, and Dan, you, you've done this so often, is like you've mentioned so many times that the team you, you piloted in Nats was Crampton's team. That's right. So, and you, you know, rightfully said multiple times that this is thanks to Scott for you know giving me the team build or stuff like that. I think right. Some people get a little, a um, little too much about team building, but I think it's great to give people their due when it's due. Like this is a team that I got from. Like I'm sure a lot of people can source their teams from like PJ or something at some right. point. But it's great to give those people the shout out to be like, hey, this is a you know a team that Tyler made up, and I've been playing it, and we worked on it together. So kudos to Tyler for making it. You know, I, I like that you were doing that, Dan. So I, I yeah, more. I mean, and Scott to... and, and and Scott had did it for me when he won the you know PJ's event with the deity version of the team. So um, it was only fair to do that back for Scott. So. Um, all right, but so for questions from last time, we got a bunch of questions from last time. Um, oh. So Brandon Bernie, uh, what insights and tips do you have for playing at the venues and preparing for Worlds? Um, so um, let's recap our, let's go back in the time machine before the pandemic. Um, the, the venue is really nice. Um, mm -hmm. it's right across the street from the hotel. So we drove across the street and paid for parking at the venue every day. Um, but you can easily walk from the hotel to, across the street to the venue, which is a convention it, center. It is a little bit of a walk. It is a little yeah, it'd bit be of a like maybe a quarter, half a mile, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'd say closer to a half than a quarter. Um, yeah, it, it isn't just across the street. It, it is a little now. There's a, like a walking path, I think. And it is literally, it, it is literally across the street, though. Yeah. The, <laughs> it is, but there's like two pretty sizable parking lots, right. so it's close enough. I, I would say that would be my tip number one, though, is prepare for breakfast. Um, breakfast at the hotel got swamped very quickly. Uh, so I remember every day for breakfast, we went to McDonald's down the road, which also led to us driving. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. You didn't because Tyler was in the truck with us. I don't know if you did or not, Alex. I don't remember. I remember. I, I think I did it once, but I remember eating downstairs more often. than Right. 
But I, I know that I we went to McDonald's quite a bit down the road, and there was other fast food places down the street. But I remember that the I never ate breakfast at the hotel because it got swamped all the time. It was also fairly pricey. Fairly yes. pricey, right? Uh, supper at the hotel was fairly pricey as well. Um, so be prepared to be mobile or just budget for eating at the hotel. It was good food at the hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So be prepared for that. Uh, there is food at the convention center. It was reasonably priced. There's also a bar at the convention center. Uh, oh, yeah. Which I was, remember that. Which was nice. We had some beers there with the two guys from California. Uh-huh. Um, Jonathan and... Jonah. Jonah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, so that was cool. Um, obviously, the Pink Limo Barbecue Place. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was right. called. Yeah, it, that got hella sketch. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. What do you mean? It was fine. It was when, good. When karaoke started, remember? They had right. that oh, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, we plan on going there again this year. But uh, So that, that would be but, but that would be my tip number one, breakfast. Um, the venue is across the street from the hotel. Um, you know, budget for like convention prices of food at the convention center. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to be right there with your hotel. So you can like pack water, you know, you know, buy you a case of water, um, you know, ditto on all the tips from Gen Con, um, you know, uh, you know, food and water and snacks and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. What were you going to say? It's, Alex? it's way more forgiving than Gen Con. Just, it is. It's not a huge convention, right? You right. It, it is a relatively small convention center. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and I, I was going to say as well, um, definitely don't plan on eating at the convention center unless it changes in the mornings on every day because I think it was at Worlds that morning. They didn't open. The, no, yeah. the convention center right. does not have breakfast as right. far as I remember. Yes. Right. Um, was When did the... That was open. Yeah, that was open. Because there's also the other place, the the Elvis Presley area, right? I never went to it. Um, yeah, I didn't either. But they mention it in the world's travel notes. On-site food, the guest house, which is the hotel, features two restaurants. The exhibition center has food vendors and the, the jungle yep. room bar. Mm-hmm. And then the, the Elvis Presley's Memphis, a short walk from the exhibition center, has full-service dining options, which is oh. very- Vernon Smokehouse, Gladys Diner, Rock and Go, which has coffee and snacks, and Minnie Mae Sweets, which has ice cream and treats. I remember yeah. where it was. We just never went over there. Yeah, we didn't go over there, but you know, maybe they've expanded that the past three years. So yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we need to. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm down. I like coffee, so I'm always. Down I, for I like that. anything with the term steakhouse in it. So <laughs> um, yeah, also agree there. So. Uh, but yeah, Brandon, uh, anything that we said for Gen Con, right, it's just going to be some things are slightly less hype, slightly less intense. Um, but I think the big thing is the venues across the street and um, prepare for breakfast. <laughs> um, I, in that same vein, I got to know, are we going to try to find another Brazilian steakhouse? Is this just going to be the thing now? Um, the problem, so the thing is with Worlds is that it is, the schedule is so stacked. Um, so like Thursday we're all going to show up and we play until late in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, because the slop's going to go at least till 6 p.m. If y'all are playing in that. Uh, Silver <laughs> Age is probably going to be till 8 or 9 o'clock that night. So then that's going to be just grabbing a small bag to eat, maybe the barbecue place. Then Friday's a full day between Team Sealed and the fan appreciation event. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Saturday is hopefully a full day for all of us, right? Playing through all the Swiss rounds and maybe the top first round of Top Cut. Um, And then Sunday is a full thing. So... I say all that to say that uh, Brazilian Steakhouse in um, Memphis is probably going to be too far for us to go to. Uh, there's Texas to Brazil, I guess that's what it's called. 
We could maybe I mean, do a Thursday night. We can talk about this. This is not a I mean, podcast. We, we could, <laughs> so we could, up, this is not a podcast material, Popeye. but... Uh, yeah, we, could do, we could do the Popeye and the Ghetto again. You know? We made it work at Nationals, which was tighter scheduled. So, like, because there was a lot of other things to do at Nationals. Mm. So That's I true. feel like we'll be able to make it work like a Saturday night. But let's ta- let's table this for now, so because uh, that's not people don't really care. Well, no, people. Pe- we we posted something about it. This is the type of things we you guys should all be working on is like finding friends and figure out where you're gonna go eat if you're gonna go into the city at all or just stick around Graceland. Like right. Well, start I would, making I will, those decisions now. I will now say this. Yeah, I will say this uh, fairly. Is that we're in Memphis? We're going to go eat barbecue. Um, I'd rather have Brazilian, bar- Brazilian, yeah, Brazilian steak. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but yeah. So there's the McDonald's. There's the Graceland. I'm just looking at the map real quick. Um, you know, be, just look on Google Maps, right? Just do a little bit of research beforehand. Um, there's the Dodge's uh, Chicken. There's a Piccadilly Cafe. There's an Aldi's grocery store close by. Um, there's Ma- Jason. There's what? Margaritas of Elvis Mexican restaurant. What? Two. Oh man! Oh my man! Oh man! Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this might be important to some people. Um, if you've never been to Memphis before, the east side of Memphis is the nicer side of Memphis. Like when you get into like Germantown. That's where, like, if you can find wherever they have a Trader Joe's and an Ikea, that generally is the nicer part of town. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's something I know when I travel, that's the, one of the first things I think about is, like, where I'm going to go eat, what are the parts of town that are, like, touristy and where people would go as opposed to a hole-in-the-wall mm-hmm. place in maybe not the nicer part of town. Oh, and there Memphis, it is. I agree. Yeah, uh, Marlowe's is the... Uh place where they come pick you oh, up in the... yeah, that's yeah. It. Oh, yeah oh my gosh yeah oh a pink limo the pink limo okay all right we gotta we gotta keep moving here or i'm gonna be thinking about barbecue ribs in my mouth next um all right so pj wants to know along with some other folks um what is our short list of teams for worlds oh my god it's only a month away it is I, it feels like it has to be the same team for nationals. I don't know if I have a month is a short turnaround to learn a new team. I feel like Jason's going for it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give it a try but... anyway. Well, what are you playing, Jason? What you What are you thinking? Uh, three apo- three legacy apocalypse. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's true. Um, that's cool. I think that's. Uh, I think that's. Uh, that's a family standard new gatekeeper of the format to think about. Is it? We'll see. We'll know. I feel like you could just do two and then support. I guess well, you're worried the support I mean, dies. I don't, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I thought of it. it depends on whether uh, slot month one is legal or not. That's true. The assumption is. Because then I'm probably but... playing some Saturn 9. Yeah, Along Saturn is great. Saturday nine, yeah, is pretty good. I, I have been practicing. I've only have a couple games on it. Um, uh, Spider Man Ruler Team with like, um, it's like a kind of a gimmick team with uh, Spider Man gets um, the what's it called, the lasso, and so you sort of you move across, you lasso them for free in cap. Spider Man hits, and so they have minus one to their attack or to their action total. And it turns off leadership, so they have two actions. And then I'm also playing Merlin, so they have two actions and two free actions. And then I'm also playing um, uh, Magic MG Jaspers, um, mm-hmm. to so I can swap, you know, things. I can make uh, like two Red Wings when I move over. Um, the problem is. <laughs> The team can do like fifteen free actions a turn or something, and I'm stuck with five. I never get out, win, or perplex anything. Ugh. That, but, that's uh, what we said in the tier maker. Like, it, like yeah, Merlin is one. If someone can crack the code of Merlin and know mm-hmm. how to how he works well, I think mm-hmm. we'll do well at Worlds. Yeah, like, it's good. 
But to go along with what TJ's, uh, TJ, PJ was saying about like short lists of teams, even if you feel solid about your teams for Nats, like take some time and just start building new teams for Worlds just so you have an idea of what the environment could be like for Worlds. Yeah, I think and you need a tarot card deck, right? Yeah. Yeah, true. Like if That's you just if you just shoot like for me, I am like okay. I know I have my Spider Man Celebrity Fantastic Four team here, and I feel comfortable with it. I will add tarot cards, practice with the tarot cards a bit. X of Swords didn't really change anything uh, for that team, so I feel solid that I have that in my pocket. And if I don't feel comfortable with anything I got new, a week before I could, you know, whip it out and start practicing with it more. But right now, I'm on. I have been talking for a few times now is that I, I do love Merlin because I do think mm -hmm. he is very oppressive. So I built tonight a mystic, mystical version, mm -hmm. and I came to the conclusion that teams from certain teams from nationals are just not going to be good anymore. Um, I don't think the mystical team that Robert played mm -hmm. was it Robert? Yeah, um, Robert. I don't think that's necessarily as good anymore because I think Blackheart takes another hit because of the what Dark Sword of Black Sword of blah blah blah. Well, and Muramasa Blade. No, not Muramasa Blade. The one that gets the Black Bone of Adam. Yes, the one that goes through stop clicks. Because I don't care if you got defensive powers. If I could just hit you for five damage and just kill you. We have to use Blade to turn off the stop click. Oh. I can flurry. I can flirt I can flurry with the object. True. Like I, like I have options there. And yeah, but you don't think that he got a bump from tarot cards at all? No, no. I think there is a definitive object, and everyone is gonna. A lot of people are gonna play Mad Jim. So I think he's much more consistent rolling leadership now. If anything, I, a lot of people were just trying to convince me that rolling leadership is not consistent. Um, very much so recently when I was trying to talk about Monarch. So, I <laughs> just say it, guys. Um, but I was enough, on your side! <laughs> funny enough, Monarch is on the team, mostly because Mysticals does not have a lot of good leaderships. Um, and Monarch has leadership. So oh, It's team, got Blackheart! I don't like Blackheart. Because I, <laughs> I think it was already risky unless you were playing two. And I think it's even riskier now that someone could just pop in an object Muramasa Blade or Blackbone and just be like, see us 75 points. And that's m mystical outside of hopefully hitting Jubilee doesn't play Scarlet Witch. It plays, his team was Jubilee and Blackheart and mm -hmm. a bunch of Lokis. So you take out Blackheart, that significantly drops the power on that team. So for me, it it's too risky so the team i have now i just literally put it together so i haven't tested it is uh merlin magic jaspers scarlet witch um the other scarlet witch the common one because she gives me tk monarch and then speed weasel oh god there's no way speed that, that... Weasel. <laughs> hear me out on this okay i gotta test it uh-huh speed weasel 14 move Charge once per turn when Speed Weasel is given a close destroy action. After resolution, she could use charges free. Cool. Mm -hmm. So TK Speed Weasel could get across the map. When Speed Weasel uses Blade Colossus Fangs or Super Senses after resolution, she may place her up to X squares away. So that works in tandem with any of the swords that she wants. Because this ability is not giving her Blade's Claws. It just says whenever she uses Blade's Claws. So you hit with a sword, and then whatever you roll on blade, she just gets to move away. And if I happen to hit Monarch that turn, I just sidestep and just move her all the way back into my starting zone. Uh huh. Like, hmm. there, I, th this is know. what we were talking about. Flash. We were talking about other things that might work with Monarch. She's one of the ones I looked at. I'm like, hey, giving her a sword with Mad Gem, any of the swords I want. Um, there might be something there. So I'm going to test it. I don't know if it's any good. Yeah. But I, mean, she's, I needed a secondary attacker with Scarlet Witch. And Black Blackheart was just not there for me. It just wasn't... I was too afraid of just losing him immediately. Mm, I don't know. I, 
I personally think Blackheart's gotten a lot better with tarot cards and with Mad Jim Jasper's giving him objects. Um, I, I think he's going to be great. But um, other teams on my short list, um, I wanted to try to build some sort of X-Men team with like double Iceman. I think Iceman's super, super good. Um, the problem is that I don't get to play Mad Jim Jasper's. <laughs> I feel like I really want to try to play him because he seems very good. Um, and then I was also looking at Mystical, but sort of that came to the opposite conclusion to you. <laughs> right. Which is fair. Yeah. But I, to sum it all up, I, right now I am just purely building with Merlin because I, I think he has a lot of potential. And his keywords are really good. Cosmic, Mystical, Past, and Ruler. I mean, those are all solid. Like Tyler's team that he was talking about at the beginning was one I also was looking at. The, mm -hmm. the Pharaoh, um, the seven, 1776... Like adding all those together to do some really inhibiting your team type stuff. So Merlin is at the top of my list right now. He may not be when it comes world time, but at least I'll know how he works and I'll know how my team works against him. So, all right, Dan, what new and exciting stuff do you got? Thanos. You can buy <laughs> three hundred. <laughs> oh. I like it. That's a surprising counterplay to just everything, right? It doesn't take free. <laughs> it doesn't take free actions. It doesn't do anything. It's true. If it rolls out, it just probably wins games. Um, I played <laughs> that in the second round. If y'all remember from the last episode, I played that in the second round of Swiss, and it, 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 Antonio just didn't roll out. So I just and now he gets he gets tarot cards to help him roll out. Uh, the tarot cards would not have helped because it was ones and twos on all of the rollouts. Uh, he would have needed a three. And um, uh, he didn't get a three. Um, so um, I do like that full uni mind play, though. Um, but yeah, it's just Thanos. I, I just. I'm comfortable with it. I like it. I can protect against the Muramasa blade coming in. Uh, I don't know whether or not it's Mad Jim yet, though. I really, really like Hope. Yeah, Hope's great. Um, Hope has been fantastic so far. Uh, mm -hmm. For forty points, and nobody dares attack her. Why? Because she's got mastermind. Oh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's like uh, it's four clicks for forty points, but she's probably sloughing it off to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, probably Thanos. <laughs> Entirely possible that it's Thanos or Star Sapphire or Collector. Right? Click, she can slough it off to Collector, who's got a stop click. Mm -hmm. um, and Mystics, or no, he doesn't have Mystics. He really. doesn't have Mystics now. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, that's my short list. All right, let's move on to today's questions. Uh, Spencer White, uh, what side events will you be prioritizing? Uh, we answered that. Um, so, Eric Adams, is, is there a character that you found during meta team building that surprised you how good it was? For example, Miles Miles West was a forgotten piece from the time SVAC mm -hmm. was released up until now. Um... I mean, nothing super mm. real. Well, I guess Speed Weasel, right? <laughs> uh, that was just me looking at, but yeah, sure. Um, fire Belly. Fire Belly. <laughs> fire <laughs> Jason, you're spoiling my future. Sorry. Oh, I, the more I look at Fire Belly, the more I don't mind him. Let's be honest with you. He's not terrible. Um, He's but... not terrible. Uh, <laughs> um, but I'm I think I'd think. rather go eat a rack of ribs than ever have to play Fire Belly. Um, but okay. can't think of anything specifically. Can't think of anything eating specifically. A, eating a rack of ribs is great, though. Right. Um, I think Miles might just be it. Right? Yeah, for, for right well, now. Yeah, but, yeah. I I want to kind of say Blackheart. I really, I really do think Blackheart is a good I, pick I, right now. I think I'm leaning more towards your assessment than Alex's assessment. Um. Mm -hmm. Because if he ever does get to make a guard, the guard just gives him Mastermind, which tees uh -huh. off before all these other things tee off. So, And if you're super worried about it, like you're going to have Mad Jim on the team, just give him the... Uh, Carnage, what's it called? Carnage Symbiote. Well, Carnage Symbiote or... Time Platform. Time Platform. If you're super worried about it, you probably do Time Platform. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a costly investment for sure. Mm -hmm. the, the other problem is is that like the one object 
also is very effective against Scarlet Witch as well. So it's like, mm -hmm. just getting through her stock click or getting through her defensive like super senses, it's like, okay, you equip that one object, both of my main attackers are a little spooked by what you got going on that Flash or mm -hmm. Sir Karen Iron Man or whoever. So that that's my main, from my thinking point was, I don't want two people susceptible to that. And I would mm -hmm. rather play Scarlet Witch than Black Heart at this point. So. Right. So is Scarlet Witch better or worse now? Via Scott um, Crampton. Scott, Scott Crampton asked. She, she's, she's inherently... She has more counters, so she's technically worse. But I think that she is better. Um, namely because of the team Jason just talked about. Three... Because of, because of Legacy Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. She does help a lot against Legacy Apocalypse. Because um, there are some teams that cannot cannot generate enough attacks to chew through an Apocalypse. Even just a single 100-point one without a Scarlet Witch putting that fella in the rune. Mm -hmm. I didn't... F Tyler, how many times did you drop... I don't know if we talked about this. How many times mm -hmm. did you drop the rune? Um... Is it once against Ed? I think that might Isaac, have been my only one. Isaac never did until the finals because here's yeah, my it, other here's my other thing. Scott also asked what percentage of the field would be X Men, and then Cody Burton also asked besides Fantastic Four swap and Thanos, what other teams are you expecting to heavily be representative? And I think it is X Men X Men swap. Um, and here's the thing: I mentioned this with the mystical team. Jubilee is an issue. Scarlet Witch helps with Jubilee. And the room. Sure. Um, I, I don't know if I can overstate that enough, is that Otherworld Castle, Jubilee, it takes six damage, and she has unoutwittable shape change. I mean, I get, I that, I get that it's only a 33% chance that she hits the shape change, but if she hits the shape change bad it she just gets to just erase your barrier you're she's a giant you can't hide she's shooting you for four five six damage maybe it um, sounds a little it sounds a little ptsd ish but um, <laughs> the, well little... the thing is, so the here's the thing here's my evidence right uh -huh. it made second place at nats right and isaac dropped the rune on her it uh -huh. won the broadcast worlds online via caleb and it was uh -huh. He beat it in top four as well at Bradcast. And um, Nationals, uh, uh, Lucas played it as well. So two of the top four were X-Men, or Jubilee, I should say. Um, and then the other two had Sakarian, Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, and Thanos. <coughs> so the, and then the if, you if you include top eight, there was one more Thanos... You had Sakari and Iron Man. There was two or two more Thanoses. You had Sakari and Iron Man. You had Scarlet Witch. Um, and then I'm forgetting what the other non-Thanos team had that made top. Oh, Joe's um, unthemed team had Sakari and Iron Man. So uh, I don't think it's a PTSD statement to say Scarlet Witch should be there because of Jubilee. I think Scarlet Witch is a great play if you don't want to sit there and do the X Men swap math all day. I I guess I just have a different opinion of Jubilee simply because like this Mystics mystical team I built, I didn't consider I considered Jubilee for a second, and then I said no because I don't want to have to play all those Lokis because I don't think it's too luck based. The unfortunate part is we don't have the data from Nationals to see how often, like, Robert won map, how often Lucas won map. Like, we don't have that that data to back it up and say, oh, they won, because, for example, what, uh, what Patrick Frazier's monster team that I forgot what tournament it was in that I did, he was very, very successful because he won map. It may have been Caleb, too. Caleb won map, like, almost every single game, which well, statistically the... is unlikely. It's more likely the way he built it, but less likely that he would win map every single time. Jubilee is very different on X-Men versus Mystical, right? Because X-Men is the swap. That's the big deal. Right. So that's why uh, Robert's version, I'm sitting here thinking, 
like he's a great player. He knows how to play that team very well. We don't mm-hmm. know how often he won map. Well, so I- what I do know is that he lost map to um, Jalen, and Jalen didn't have the maps prepared to face that sort of team, and Jubilee got to convert because they got more than five turns in. Right. So, it's Jalen, guys. Come whoa, on. true, easy. true. Whoa, sure. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> He's easy. the guy who played two primes, right? Yeah. So I, I heard that he got mercy ruled in Nats one year. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, he did. Oh, that, did he did uh, that more than once, right? I don't think so. No. Um, Dan, so, but anyways, make a, point, make a point. Isaac did drop the rune against me as well. Oh, got it. Got gotcha. you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, maybe not perfect for you, but no, um, it was not <laughs> right. Um, um, and then you know what? I like this is uh, so I think the gauntlet becomes everything that you see from Nats, and then X Men. I I I just PTSD or not, Alex? Like I'm a little offended that you're calling it PTSD, but I think it is a very valid statement to say what happens if you lose map, and there's a giant jubilee that erases your barrier. Sees over all of your figures and shoots you with Psyblast. Well, yeah, we all agree you should be ready for Jubilee because right. she has seen play and we'll see play. You also are a player who consistently plays a lot of barrier, so more susceptible. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I mention it is because. Well, she's going to have a block. huge attack value, right? So even Fantastic Four has an issue against her. I, um, I'm not that scared of her because what? She's going to shoot my lockjaw for four? She's going to. Like, she can deal, dish out the damage, but she's like she, an emperor gladiator. She's got two, uh, well, she's got two targets. Okay. And so she can deal it out to one of your main force characters, because you're only, um, you know, you can't mastermind it to Lockjaw. Um, right, sure. So she can one-shot, like, you know, Valeria or something like that. I don't know what all you're going to have on your team, but... Um, she can definitely one shot one of your squishier pieces, and then sure. and then have dolphin symbol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. that's all that is true. Yeah, and, all that's true. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's something to be cognizant of, but I'm not like super. Oh my gosh, I got. Well, you're playing like, Scarlet Witch. That's the thing. You're playing. You can just drop the rune on Jubilee. I I also think at uh, the back of another statement, like to think of all the teams from Nats. This set that's coming out just changes a lot of those. Isaac's team, PJ's team, they don't function nearly as well with Merlin around. Period. Possibly. Like, I playing against Isaac, he had so many free actions. A ridiculous amount of free actions. That limiting him to four would make his team sit. now isaac could pull it off don't get me wrong he could pull well it off, i think uh um, i'm think... talking about people that are trying to just take his team and like right it. yeah i, I was, was gonna say merlin i think uh, enough. i was gonna say i think uh <laughs> isaac plays uh, merlin that's my guess oh yeah i think more people play merlin than you expect because it just is a it requires you to be a different kind of player, and if you know him very well, I think you'll you'll do well with it. I may be wrong, but there's just something about Merlin. I'm like, so many teams rely on free actions to get up the board. All the Venom Magnetos, everyone relies on free actions. To limit that to four is significant. So I, I, I'm eager to see if that's true or not. Right. But, I don't disagree with you. Um, but uh, oddly enough, is that if you drop the rune on Jubilee, uh, she can then be Krakoan Revivaled. Because she's no longer a giant. But, she, but she, can't, she can't convert again, though. Right, she just goes back to puny. Yeah. Because it's once per game. But that is a very interesting uh, fact. Um... So, let's go through the thing. We went through the nostalgia draft. Um, McConnell wants to know um, X-Men Primes? Um, oh, yeah. 
like which ones are good so what are they because i was interested in this right so uh it's, it's not iska it's mm. not captain britain rogue uh true those are not on the list uh, it's, they are technically on the list but they're not it's just like it's just bishop and mimic are the reasonable ones right mm, uh, well um uh gladiator because he can be swapped in oh uh, sure but i didn't really count him as x-men but i get what you're saying he could because he's she are right so i would say bish uh, i would say mimics the top and then bishop what about omega red no zorn uh, no <laughs> uh dark beast that's probably, underdog that's probably fourth yeah i would say fourth but it's like so yeah. far away behind gladiator that it's not even funny though yeah it's probably it's really just bishop or mimic and i like mimic because we have deadpool now <laughs> so mimic is probably number one and then bishop and then uh, Gladiator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A mad thinker. He's Illuminati. <laughs> He's trying to be robots. No, I know. No. Terrible. I'm just saying. Out of all the eligible primes, Emperor Vulcan. Mm. Yeah. All right. True. True. Let's see here. So, but that was answering Spencer's white question a lot about someone is not what is the world's gauntlet for this year. Uh, basically, someone has not been able to pay attention to games um cody's question that was tied into that we answered that um andrew wilson will exoswords month three or any of the exoswords slot be legal for world it does not appear so yeah they they updated the modern list um i think it was yesterday to include exoswords but not the the op it's so it not, looks it's like not the, it's not the release date yet that's, that's true Jason's got so much. That's true. Like, he wants to play that. Um, what's her face? Saturn. Saturn Nine. Saturn Nine. Yeah. Um, I I wish it was because there there was really good stuff in that set and it would make uh, building more interesting. Um, but I don't think I, I don't think it will be. Yeah, as a, if I was betting on it, I would say no. Right. You guys are such negative names. <laughs> Do you think? It is? I think. I, I, what did you yeah, say? What did that's you, what I thought. What did you say, Tyler? I said, does Jason think it is going to be legal? <laughs> no, he does not. Right, I got you. I'm, I'm, holding, I'm holding out hope, Tyler. Okay, okay. Um, uh -huh. So, um, and then, so Anthony's question, he had a big bunch of questions. Uh, what side yeah. events would you create? I don't know. Uh, we talked about <laughs> the expected number of, uh, how many rounds of Swiss do you want to see at 128? Um, at 128, I want to see six rounds in a top 32. That's so much. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Let me see. Let me just do the 128. Yeah. Will I make top cut? Yeah. I want. I want to play. I want to play. I. Whatever it is, I want all X and ones to make it. That's the main thing. Yeah, all X ones make it. So 121, six rounds, top cut. 128. 30, I see, yeah, 130, 128, six rounds, cut 32. Um, you could go five rounds and you're fine. Um, five, five rounds, 24 people make it of five and oh and four and one. So that leaves eight people at three and two to make it. That, okay, yeah. all right, I, I would go with five at 128. Boy, that's tight though. Whoo, that feels tight. No, that's how it should be. X and ones, and then a few X twos make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then that's perfect. Eight out of thirty, eight out of forty. So I mean, three and twos will make it. That's that's not bad. That's probably the most realistic thing they do. Right. Let's see. If you back it down to four rounds of Swiss, that feels doesn't feel right. I'm just I'm just playing around with the calculator. You could do six rounds in top sixteen, but that just feels worse. Yeah, it does. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't. X ones don't make it at. Um, four rounds. So mm -hmm. five rounds, cut thirty-two. Yeah, that would, would be what I would want at one twenty-eight-ish. But now, if we end up with like a hundred and forty players, um, 
you still get all of your X1s that make it. Um, but I don't think we're going to have 150 in the big event. Um, it's surprisingly, the numbers stay about the same. Uh, you just get the number of X2s that don't make it. Uh, that, that lower and lower. And that actually makes sense with what we were talking about earlier with the X of Swords event. You know, being three rounds or four rounds, if you know you're one and two and low points, it's like, okay, I really got to win out with high points. I'll play round four. If I don't get high points and I win, I know I'm not going to make it either way. Mm -hmm. right. I'll go play the X of Sword event. So like the last round, round five, you'll probably see like a ton of drops because you know, you know, that's just right. So one, 128 all the way up to 164 uh, is five rounds cut 32 and your X1s make it. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, even at 164, 1 1.3 players at 3-2 will make top cut and 50 will miss. Mm. So they're going to slice somebody into a third. Um, I know that's not how it works. That's supposed to be a joke. Um, <laughs> Good one. Uh, so... Uh, I guess the last question we have for tonight um, uh -huh. is how do you feel about the first round buy into the main event? We all have over 50 rock points here, right? Yep. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Are <laughs> you going to exercise your first round buy? Uh, yes. No, I am. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I don't think you wouldn't, right? With yeah. The, with X1, with it being tight with the proposed number of rounds and stuff that we got here? I think it it would kind of suck to be 150 points. It's not confirmed yet. Um, but that's what buys that's, are. There's no reason to think that it wouldn't be that, right? Well, yeah, but it's not it's not a normal buy, right? I, I would not be surprised if they did uh, 300 buys. Um, but the, it seems like the expectation is 150. Um, but yeah, I you know you take a win. I, I take a win. I, I will 100 percent be using it. Yeah, and I get to sleep in. I uh, know you don't. Oh, I probably because, don't. No, you, you don't. Have, yeah, you, you got to register still. You do have to register. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna sit there. I guess I could do a BR. Uh, yeah, you could maybe do a BR. It's too far for you to drive home too. So. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah it's fair. But you might go back to the hotel though. You might just register. You know. I'll go back to my room. It doesn't feel bad. Get there real early at nine, register first, and then I got two hours. Go get a snacky or something. Yeah. Uh, the way I your was... brain works, Tyler, is absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Thank uh, you. I will say this based off of Nats. Mm -hmm. um, while it may feel like the buy 150 points is a risk, there was not a lot of points to be had at nationals i don't feel like like there wasn't a lot of points scored. yeah i'm pretty sure my average on my wins was under 150 <laughs> yeah so like 150 you might be thinking oh yeah old old tournaments oh i'm scoring 300 every time baby and it's like nah, that's not yeah. happening as often yeah so mm -hmm. 150 probably is gonna feel good it's just gonna feel real bad if you lose you know you go three and two and you're off by like 40 points, you're always going to play that game of what if I played round one and got paired with some somebody playing like a fast horses team. I want to increase the um, huh, increase the round time by 10 minutes. That would be cool. That's well, interesting. Because of, tar of tarot cards. That's a, that That's a, a major Ooh. consideration because it's... We're not going to be super fast with that yet with a month, but uh, just in general, I think it would be cool. Yeah. Um, and then this is not a question as much as it is a statement. I think that I am converting Brad's question into a statement. Uh, no, Kids, it's a question. No, WizKids is doing away with the World Championship designer <laughs> figure because Tyler hasn't played House of S Juggernaut as the main focus of any of his teams. I don't like how many reacts that comment got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> screw you all. Screw all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. It got uh, a bunch of laugh reacts, and uh, uh -huh. it got a bunch of uh, heart. It got a couple of heart reacts. So you heard Wizkid's feelings, Tyler. They uh -huh. spent so much time designing this with you, and I brought him to Nats. Yeah, Joey. Joey P definitely tried to qualify with his figure. So 
Yeah. Uh, uh, you mean, know what? And Isaac didn't play Isaac, so they were uh, sorry. So they Red, were Red Sun Lex Luthor. Yeah. They were so sad that you didn't play them. They're like, well, we got to use this cool scope uh, sculpt on somebody, so I guess we'll reuse it in for Danger Room. We weren't planning to, but. You know, uh -huh. Tyler made this cool sculpt and this helped with it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I made the sculpt. I sculpted it in yeah, my room out of clay. Out of clay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a secret art people don't know that you didn't yeah. do, so. Right. All right, well, this has been fun. We've got a lot more to do between now and Worlds, um, off, <sighs> all, online and offline. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we are super excited to see everybody at Worlds. Um, about a month away, as Alex pointed out. So let's wrap it up. Final thoughts, Jason. I hope slot month one is legal. <laughs> Sloppy slop, Alex. Uh, Merlin, can't wait. Tyler, I guess Mad Mad Jim Jaspers. <laughs> All right, and and going with the one word final thoughts. Thanos. <laughs> Thanks everybody for listening to Clicks Off today. We'll talk to y'all next time. See ya. Later.